Welcome to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a tour of Cliffside Park. This is a park I created for Dirk Link's Narrow Coaster Contest on his Discord server. The goal was to build a park no wider than 20 tiles, and any coaster had to be 8 tiles wide or less. So this is my entry. I created the seaside park with jagged cliffs and waves crashing against the shore. The park features 16 rides, including four roller coasters. There's a number of little shops and things like that. It's really fun to explore. But what's really unique about this park, besides the fact that it's amazingly awesome because I built it, is that every single ride is completely custom made. All of the rides are tracked rides. I did not use any of the basic flat rides that are standard in the game. I basically created all of the flat rides in this park using tracked rides built from scratch. And following this video, I will be creating tutorials to show you how to build each of these unique rides yourself. So please make sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more videos coming your way. And if you would like to download this park yourself, there is a link in the video description below. So if you're ready, well, let's take a tour of all the rides in Cliffside Park. And for the first ride, we have the Cliffside Carousel. Now this is just a simple little carousel ride. It's five by five tiles, so a little bit larger than the normal flat ride in the game. I use the steeplechase horses and the Virginia reel tubs. But what's fun is that the tubs actually spin every other rotation as they go around. This is a really simple ride to build. It requires no shoe stringing. It's really easy and it definitely adds something to your park by making a little bit more of a realistic looking carousel and it's a little bit larger as well. So stay tuned for that tutorial. Next, we have Cliffhanger. Now this is modeled after Xcream, which is a ride on top of the Strat Tower in Las Vegas, where riders are tipped over the edge of the building. Here, they're careening off the edge of the cliff side. Now this is a really fun ride to add to your park if you have the landscape like a cliff or a really high building, but it is a little bit trickier to build compared to the carousel we just saw. I actually got the idea from one of Dirk Link's videos. It does involve a little bit of shoestringing, but if you have the space in your park and the right environment, it's a really fun ride to add. It's also really fun in real life. If you ever get a chance to go to Las Vegas, it's definitely worth giving it a go. And here we have a pair of drop towers. I'm not gonna create a tutorial for these rides. You all know how to build them. The only thing I did differently was change the ride vehicles to the rotodrop cars. And that was just to increase the capacity so the lines aren't so long. Next, we have Skydiver. Now this flat ride is modeled after those hang glider rides you might have seen at traveling fairs. They're actually the cliffhanger model that is from Batek or Batech Enterprises. I'm not really sure how to say the name, I had to Google it, but it's a really fun family ride that you can add to your park. I use the flying coaster cars here to kind of give you that hang gliding experience. And what's great about this design is that there is no shoe stringing involved, so you can actually save the track and plop it down in any park. And it's a really great addition to kind of add another flat ride, a family flat ride to your park. And here is the park's lighthouse with the waves crashing against the rocks. Hidden inside the lighthouse is actually the lighthouse tour. Now this is a ride that I used some station from a tracked ride, but actually turned it into a crooked house. And I used a little bit of trickery so that there is only one path that serves as the queue line as well as the exit path. So you can see that here. Uh, but also I did a little tricks and things like that to boost the excitement and the capacity of this ride as well. It's a really easy way to kind of fit some sort of small walking tour type ride into your buildings. So I will show you how to do that in the tutorial. And here is the park's first roller coaster, Scamper. This is a spinning wild mouse coaster and the reviews from Dirk Link's contest, many people complained about the two car trains, which I do agree they are a little bit unrealistic, but I did add the second car to increase capacity because the lines for these coasters are usually very long. But if you like this ride design, you can download the track. The link is in the video description below. And here is Cloud Nine. This ride is modeled after the Mondial Windseeker rides you find at many Cedar Fair parks or the Starflyer models. 
It's very easy to build. It doesn't require any shoe stringing, so you can save the track design and plop it down in any park. And next to it, we have Undertow. This is the park's wooden coaster. Now the rules of Dirk Link's contest stated that coasters had to be eight tiles wide or less. So I was very impressed with the layout I came up with. For a wooden coaster, there's lots of twists and turns. It's a nice compact layout. So I was very happy with how this turned out. I've actually saved the track design and added it to many of my other parks because the footprint is just so small. It fits in nice narrow plots of land. So if you'd like to download this track yourself, check out the link in the video description below. And now we return to the front of the park where we have a leapfrog. Now this kiddie ride might look familiar because I have already posted a tutorial of how you can build this ride. It is modeled after the frog hopper kiddie rides you might have seen at your local fair. This is a really easy ride to create. There's no shoestringing involved, so you can just save the track and put it in any park. Now I like to use the rotodrop vehicles for this ride, even if it's a little less realistic but the 16 rider capacity just helps with the queue times because despite the ride's short duration, they usually have a long line in my parks, but it's just a really easy ride to just throw in anywhere and the footprint's so small, you can just add a kiddie ride to your park. And here is the star attraction of Cliffside Park. This is Surge. This roller coaster features 11 inversions. I modeled it after Intamin's Colossus at Thorpe Park and Gerstlauer's Smiler from Alton Towers. And the first drop was inspired by Drakenfire, the old arrow coaster from Busch Gardens Williamsburg. It has this twisting drop through two inversions as it makes its way down. I was very impressed with how I managed to fit 11 inversions in such a small footprint. The coaster is only eight tiles wide and it still manages to have an intensity rating less than 10. Unfortunately, this track design cannot be saved because the file format in OpenRCT2 at this time does not allow saving the new inversion elements featured here on the Giga Coaster track, as well as a few others. And this little ride is called Chaos. I'm not really sure what its real world counterpart is. It's kind of a cross between a scrambler ride and a teacup ride. It would probably make you really sick in real life with all that spinning, but I just thought this was a unique ride to add to my park. Just something you don't really see. Just a fun little thing. No shoestringing involved. And here is Spin Cycle. This is modeled after Zamperla's disco rides. They're very easy to create in OpenRCT2. It's basically rotodrop vehicles on hybrid track, but I will still make a tutorial for it. I did use a few little tricks to make it look a little bit nicer. I think these rides are great. They fit in these narrow plots of land and they look really nice in your park. They're also really fun to ride in real life. And next to it, you can see Skyscraper, which is a parachute drop tower. Now this is another star attraction of the park. It's quite the eye catcher. This is the tallest ride in the park and it was also the most tedious to build. It took a lot of shoestringing and patience to get everything working just right, but I think it was worth it in the end. It gives the park a nice Coney Island sort of vibe. These para-drop towers are actually really fun to ride in real life if you can find them. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of them left in existence. And fair warning, the tutorial for this ride will be the most challenging of all the rides in this video. Like I said, there's a lot of shoestringing involved, but I will walk you through it. So if you're up for the challenge, this will make a worthy addition to your park. And here is Ring of Fire. Now this is modeled after the Fireball Rides by Larson, those giant loops you might've seen at your traveling fairs. Now it does look kind of wonky having that flat piece of track at the bottom, and many people in the contest gave me reviews that it looked kind of silly. But the reason I did that is because it's actually hiding the station track. This is not a shoestring ride, it's just a powered launch ride. So you can save the track design and add it to any of your parks. Uh, so it's just really easy. And I'll show you some little tricks on how to do that in the tutorial. Uh, but there are better ways to make these rides if you don't want to have that flat piece of track. But I just did this for ease of use. Here we have Ocean Flyers. Now I'm not really sure what the real world counterpart for this ride would be. I kind of invented this ride on my own. 
It has the swinging seaplane cars from one of the expansion packs, and the vehicles are going up and down while going around in a circle, swinging back and forth. Now this is a little bit more technical compared to some of the other rides. There is a little bit of shoestringing involved, but I think it's really unique and really fun, and it just kind of adds something that the normal lineup of flat rides doesn't really have. So it's a great ride to add to your park if you're willing to put in the work to build it in the first place. And last, we have the park's fourth roller coaster. This is the kitty ride called Rock Hopper. Now it's a single rail coaster with the Ladybird trains on it. I have saved the track design, so if you want to add this to your park, you can. The link is in the video description below. However, you do need to disable all clearance checks to build it. And that's all for Cliffside Park. If you'd like to download the park yourself, click the link in the video description below. And make sure to subscribe because I'll be creating tutorials for all of the rides you've seen in the video today so that you can build them yourself. In fact, the first tutorial is already up for the Frog Hopper or Leapfrog ride if you haven't seen it already. And let me know in the comments what tutorials you're looking forward to seeing most. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.